Wonderful. Well, thank, I mean, thank you all for incredible reflections on what potential solutions look like. Um, I was charged by the team with um, trying to summarize everything that went on today um, in five minutes. Um, and it, it caused me to realize that virtually every one of our panels, maybe every one of our panelists, their main points, each of which could be an entire day-long session to really dig into. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but let me, uh, you know, a couple of things that really came through to me in the conversation. Um, one is really the criticality and the clarity of the voices that are coming forward now in terms of patients and practitioners, um, whether it's the physicians who are taking care of the patients, the pharmacists who are there to serve them on the front lines. Those are really the stories that are going to drive the dialogue as we go forward. Um, and while um, all the economists and all the lawyers and all the policy people will play in this every day. Um, the politics are going to get pushed by the real stories that are affecting people every day. And so that's, that's really quite, quite critical, and I think we heard that today. Um, you know, from the, from the explaining the problem panel was fascinating. I think we got a great understanding of how complicated it really is, and yet, um, and I think we heard this throughout the day, Everything circles back, as Lauren said, to everything hanging off the price and the launch price. And that's at the root of the problem. And I think, as Rena said, that it, a bunch of other problems spin off of that that also need to be dealt with. Um, I think we heard the critical, um, I would say, the public opinion. Um, this is a politically attractive issue. And therefore, there is the opportunity to try to push policy in this space as we go forward. Um, I was really touched by Steve Pearson's comments around looking at the entire drug ecosystem and the need to look at it as a whole, um, pricing still being at the center. Um, but also, as he just said, um, many of the players inside of that drug ecosystem are increasingly uncomfortable with the established economic relationships that have been there for a long time. Um, I mean, we're all here. Um, many of us have imperfect economically rational incentives, and yet we see there's a huge problem that needs to be, be addressed beyond the cold-hearted economics of it. Um, Lauren, your comment on um, there's no one solution, I think, is something that I've always said. Um, that shouldn't stop us from, from dealing with the problems that we know are in front of us. Um, I think, Representative Salinas, your points on uh, you. What I took away from your points is the, the, the need for persistence in this space. Um, persistence, timing, and continuing the educational process so that policymakers have a better and better understanding both of what the problems are and what the potential opportunities are. Um, Jane, I thought your explanation of existing law and regulation being a real barrier to states um, took me back in time to when we used to talk to each other when I was still a puppy lobbyist on Medicaid best price. Thank you for saying that. Um, it's never a complete meeting for me until we have some kind of dialogue around Medicaid best price. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, but you also made the point on needing the creativity, having the creativity to address the holistics um, around all of this. Um, Amy, thank you for reminding us that the pharmacists are the ones who are actually there with the patients. Um, and there's, a, there's an absolute need for that all the time. And Rena, you know, both the comments that you were making today and the conversation that we had offline, um, one of the things that I do think is underappreciated and demanding far more attention is whether the system that we have developed to finance drug development um, is leaving a whole lot of stuff on the table that could be a value for society and for individual patients. And the economic expectations, in my view, and at some point you and I will go and sit down and um, argue out our varying perspectives over, over some period of time, but I think we're actually in pretty close alignment. The way the system is set up now um, is targeting in investment in a relatively small number of potentially extraordinarily profitable innovations and leaving a whole bunch of stuff off the table. And so we need to really, um, and this gets, this goes to pricing, but it goes beyond pricing to thinking about how will we get back to bringing the pharmaceutical industry to being as innovative in reality as it potentially could be. 
And that is at the core of, of much of the problem. And I think you described it as re-engineering the system to serve this true masters who are the people who live in our country and the people who we're responsible for taking care of. So there's a whole, I, I made a list of many other things, but I don't have time for all those things. Um, but I do think that again, um, you know, our, our time today did um, reflect how valuable it is to pull us together periodically to talk about problems that we see, um, things that we mutually are all very concerned about. And I think this will just be a continuation of a dialogue that we will have. Um, the team had pulled together a couple of slides in the interim showing it's, it's not just when we sit down together, there's plenty of virtual conversation to have. So I urge you if you're on social media um, to try to continue that conversation. Um, and overall, um, I, I just want to thank everybody for so many of you sticking with us for the whole day. Clearly, um, we have more work to do, um, more conversations to have. And as Norm Ornstein told us, um, there is some light at the end of this tunnel, and we should keep driving at it. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Take care.